and we're back with some more X4. And today we're going to be dealing with defense towers. They are incredibly useful and cost efficient ways of containing the Xenon. The biggest questions when it comes to defense platforms are how big should you make them? Not that big actually, about five discs should be sufficient and what weapons should you put on them? Short answer, plasma. Uh, plasma and flak cannons. That's it. That's all you need to do and they will take care and stop of massive waves of xenon with no attrition at all. You can just leave them there forever and forget about them. And that is their whole strength. You don't need to build a fleet that will get attrited away or damaged or destroyed. These things will stop entire xenon inflation, invasion fleets one after the other with not a single scratch on them. Anyway, let's get around to designing one to show you the best variant I've found so far. Location, location, location. And it's going to vary depending on how your map rolled out. Since uh, a lot of the stuff is randomized, it might end up that the Xenon are very strong in one area and weak in another depending on the map you're on. Hatikva's choice is usually consistently pouring Xenon a lot of the time, so a defense tower there is pretty much always a must. This will hold them off forever. And over here we are going to put down a defense tower, even though it's not really necessary on this particular map, it's the only location that's actually available right now. Alright, as you'll see we've got the gate in front of us. The gate is exactly 10 kilometers away. Now the reason I chose 10 kilometers is 10 kilometers is about the maximum range of your plasma cannons. So we want to place the defensive structure right about here where our ship is. You're also going to probably want an M4 with a decent weapon loadout so that if something does come along and try and kill your tower while you're building it, you can defend the tower until it can defend itself. Then you're going to want to come in here, we're going to line up on the gate, uh, actually we'll do this the wonky way, we're going to create a new plot. Now when we're making a new plot, we want to make the new plot, uh, where is it, one kilometer in diameter, or one kilometer around. It's just the cheaper we make this, the better. We want to create a new plot and then, oh yeah, it's really hard to fit in here. This is one of those awkward ones, there's actually two waypoints that drop off here, it's going to be really at, there we go. Now, once it's placed down, you'll notice that it's at a weird, janky angle to the gate. We don't like that, so what we're going to do is hold down the right mouse button and then drag back, and then you can slowly rotate around. We want to kind of have it facing the gate, if at all possible, and then maybe if we could move that a little bit close, right about there. Yeah, so that's just about parallel, and there we go, 10 kilometers away. Perfect. Now we would like to buy the license. It's about 97 grand, but it's usually about 64. If you're not surrounded on all sides by all of these gateways and things, you should only pay about 64,000 being this close to the gate. With the license purchased, we'd like to continue. Oh, now one thing that you might have turned off at some point is allow show environment. This is normally useful when you're building a large factory, but in this instance, I would advise you to leave it on so you can get an eyeball on where the gate is and then build your defense platform from there. This is fairly straightforward. For the modules, we're going to want to go with dock module, basic. You don't need anything fancy here. Cheaper, the better. Chuck that down. Then we want to go straight into defensive modules. Now, the best defense modules we're going to go with is all Argon. I failed to notice at this point and for the rest of the video that I'm using Teladi defense discs. Uh, these are inferior to the Argon defense discs, which can carry two more weapons. Argon defense discs can hold 12 large guns, 8 medium. Uh, same with the Paranid defense disc. Teladi ones can only hold 10 large, 8 medium. Um, actually, the split can hold 12 and 12. 12 large, 12 medium, but you don't use them because their arcs of fire are just horrendous. You can't bring even half of the weapons to bear. You're lucky if you can bring a third of their weapons to bear at the same time. Whereas, oh, Paranid Defense Disc, same problem. It's circular. The chances of bringing all your guns to bear on one target are very, very, very slim. And then you've got the Teladi one, which has two less large weapon amounts, which means there's an imbalanced amount of guns. It's, it's not great. It's not terrible, it's just not as good as the Argon Defense Disc. This one has excellent arcs of fire. There's basically a 180 degree range around this, sort of a sphere on top and the bottom, meaning if you come from one side or the other, you're going to get hit by 50% of the guns. And if you try and come in from any of these straight edge angles, you're going to get hit by 100% of the guns, making this the best of all of them. The only bearing this has on the rest of the tutorial is this whole building we're going to make would cost normally about 500,000 more. Apologies, should have noticed this. Pure Argon tech. That will become more important later, but for now we're going to go with an Argon defense platform, one on the right, one on the left, then we're going to come around to the front, put another Argon defense platform on the front, and then immediately rotate it at 90 degrees. Uh, one second. Now, you, if you ever let go of this, you'll never be able to figure out where it was. You'll have to reset, but see there, 90 degrees. Perfection. Then, once we've done that, we're going to copy that module, and we're going to place one on top, and then copy it again, and place one on the bottom. Oh my god, I can barely see anything with that. There we go. Okay, but before we hit commit, what we're going to do is come over here, and we're going to remove global settings and set this to closed loop. 
I'll do a little bit more on that in a minute. But now that's it to close loop, we're going to hit confirm module selection. And please tell me we can see this better. Ugh. I'm just going to remove the environment for visibility's purposes. And there you go. You can see we have three defense modules stacked vertically and two horizontally. And all of them are facing off towards the gate. Now we'll just throw the gate back on for a second. And then what you can do is, once the whole thing is built, you can then rotate this using this thing here. And that'll allow you to line it up with the gate so that you're not messing things up. And right about there. We want to make sure it's facing it so that any ships coming out of that gate immediately face this defense tower. And it's basically a cross-shaped defense tower that can hit it from all angles. However, we're not finished. We have to set up guns on this. That means you go into edit loadout and you get one large selection and four medium. However, we're going to large here. We're going to go with argon large plasma. And this is my recommendation definitively. Go with argon large plasma. There is an argument to be made for Ar uh, paranid large plasma, but we'll come back to that in a bit. Uh, then we're going to want to do the same here. We want to want flak. Max those turrets out as well. So flak for all the other four. Once you've maxed out the flak and the plasma, you'll notice that these little bars, them, the white bars, they're not full. That's because we haven't assigned out shielding. For shielding, we're going to recommend Argon Mark II shields. You may have access to Terran shields or stuff like that. No, 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 no. Just go with Argon for the time being. This shall all become very clear. And we're going to crank that up to four. Make sure that the white bar is full. If the white bar is not full, you've missed a shield or a gun or something along those lines. Then we'll come down. Same thing again. Argon Mark II shields. And finished. So that is a fully equipped module, and this should be your default template for everything forever when it comes to defensive modules. Then you're going to want to save that. Argon Defense Standard seems perfectly normal. Save as new, confirm loadout changes, and then you kind of have to go in and change the rest. I'm going to turn off the background for the minute. And then you have to go into each one of them and edit the loadout. What you can do here is just go in, Argon Defense Standard, select, loads it all up, confirm loadout changes. So while it is a little bit annoying the first time around, once we've done this loadout once, we should be able to just save this whole building and just use it as normal. Once every single defense platform has been assigned out Argon Plasma, Argon Flak, and Argon Shields, we're going to go in here, we're going to save it, and this is the cross defense platform. We're going to save that as new, and then now that that's finished, there's one last thing we want to do. We're going to show the environment, make sure we can see the gate over there, and then what we're going to do is we're going to scooch this forward until it turns red. When it turns red, that means we can't go any further forward, so we'll scooch it back just a tiny bit, and done. Then we confirm the module changes. Okay, now here comes a few things that are less obvious. Now, if we go under resources needed to complete the changes, it's going to cost us claytronics, energy cells, and hull parts. It, there's no other cost to this except these very basic ingredients, and that's because we chose closed loop. If you do not have the Tides of Avarice DLC installed, you will not have access to the closed loop system. I'll cover more on that in a minute. But long story short, the Tides of Average Avarice introduced a faction that had been trapped, cut off from everyone, had very access to low resources, and they ended up making everything out of basic components. This is what introduced the whole closed loop production system. This means that they can make things, their, their weapons and shields, without having to use shield components or weapon components or turret components and things like that. This makes it much easier to put together a defensive tower. However, the faction started off as Argon, so it only applies to Argon's weapons, shields, and stuff like that, which is why we're using exclusively Argon weapons to make this. You could, in theory, make include Paranid Plasma Turrets. They have a slightly longer range, slightly better DPS. However, if we start doing that, let's go back into the station here, and uh, let's see all the resources. We've got Claytonics, Energy Cells, and Hull Parts. And now let's go in here and make one change to one of these Teladi Discs. By swapping out the Argon Plasma for Paranid Plasma, we can confirm those loadout changes. And this is just on one disc, not all of them. We'll confirm the module changes, and you see currently all it's costing us is Claytronics and Hull Parts, which are actually pretty mid-level stuff and easy enough to get your hands on. Not, not really easy, but maybe a little bit easier than getting your hands on advanced electronics and turret components. Now, it does mean that you need more Clay Claytronics and Hull Parts than you would normally need, but the not needing to get advanced electronics and turret components usually makes these much faster to build. As well as that... If you try and build shields as well, if you try and use, say, Paranid shields or anyone else's shields, confirm the loadout changes, confirm the module changes, and oh look, we need field coils as well. So this gets far more complicated the more random stuff you put in there. So if you stick exclusively with Argon stuff and you set it to closed loop, assuming you have the Tides of Avarice DLC, then you can make this for much cheaper, much easier, much faster. However, if you do not have the Tides of Arborist DLC, then I would advise you to build this pretty much the same way with a few minor changes. One, Paranid Plasma is slightly better than Argon Plasma, so go that to root. And when it comes to the shielding, you can mix and match, but preferably you'd go with Turin Shields because you can get more of them. However, that's kind of expensive. 
Parodid or Argon shields are perfectly acceptable, even Taladi shields. Just use whichever shields you have access to that are Mark II. You don't really need to go anything special. The only reason we want to specialize in the turn stuff is to make sure it simplifies the building process. The price tag for this little monster is about 4.6 million. You can see that under Manage Buy Offers for Needed Resources. 4.6 million is almost nothing in comparison to what it takes to hold us off. Like, this thing can hold off entire Xenon invasion fleets. 4.6 million would buy you a pretty good medium-class ship. You're not even going to get close to a destroyer for this. And even if you did buy a destroyer, a destroyer wouldn't be able to take on the same amount that this can. Sure, the destroyer can move, though. Now, before we assign out a builder, there's one more thing we're going to do. Occasionally, you're going to want to add on an administrative center to these things. However, it's not going to fit. Now, there's just not enough space in a one kilometer by one kilometer uh, box. So, what we'd like to do is come back out here, and what you can do is you can edit these on the fly. So, we can come back into Manage Plots. We can select this one here, and then what we want to do is pick the back end of it. And let's see, we'll zoom in a bit closer so we can hopefully see it better. We want this back end here to go along. I think it's this one. No. Ah, here we go. It's the X direction. Uh, so the X direction will allow it to go back a bit. Now, this is going to depend. If It might not be the X axis on your one. It will depend entirely on where your gate is and what way everything's orientated. But by popping this out the back just a little bit, that will cost us an extra 48 grand. We can buy the license for that. Continue. What we can now do is go right back in here and throw on an administrative center at the rear. And done. Uh, that will, of course, jack up the price a little bit, but what can you do? Now it's up to 5 million. I don't really need this here, but we'll leave it in for uh, completeness sake. Then you can save that if you want as well, accept the estimate, uh, then close this up, and we want to assign out a hire a builder. Now for this, you want to start zooming out slowly and figuring out when a ship shows up here. Ships will show up based on how much of the map you have visible, so ooh, there's a hop ship right there. Select it. Done. And finished. There are a few things that can go wrong in the production. One, when you start building it, you mess up. And you don't set this to closed loop at the start. In which case, you'll have to, well, basically cancel the whole lot of it. Cancel everything you've built, set it to closed loop, and then start again. If, once it's, if it starts building it, it as a one type of construction type, you can't switch it halfway through. You have to start the way you intend to finish, or it won't work. So if you get caught out, just delete everything, start again. Uh, if you do want to delete your section here, you can actually delete the plots you've created. However, you'd have to sit, first cancel all the buildings and then wait about five seconds. You see there's this basic dock it's trying to build. Uh, if you cancel everything, that will still have to complete before you're allowed to delete the plot. I don't know why, it's just uh, one of the mechanics of the game. Anyway, we're going to stay here, we're going to build this real quick, and then we're going to show you a few things to keep an eye out for. If you're keeping an eye on the construction project, you can actually just select it, uh, go all the way to the bottom and show filled capacity, and it'll show you what wares have already been brought, and it'll, the green shows you what wares are already en route. If you want to see how far away things are, just say you're holding out on energy cells or something like that, you can click on configure station, and down under the build resources, it'll be... Uh, under resources needed to complete changes, it'll show you which ships, their names, how far away they are, estimated time to get there, what they're carrying, all that stuff. I've before cancelled energy cells that were coming from halfway across the sector because it was going to take them 12 minutes to get there and just brought local stuff over. So if you want to try and speed things along, especially if it's a heavily contested area, there's some stuff you can do here. You could also bring your own ships along to offload resources as quickly as possible. One thing to remember, one really handy thing about this is you just need electronics, energy cells and hull parts. All three of those, once they're done, that means they're going to start building the turrets instantly. What can happen otherwise is the Tetronics energy cells and hull parts are used to build the modules, and then if you don't have the turrets and the shielding components and stuff like that, you might not be able to build the guns or the shields, or you can get caught up in so many ways. So the closed loop system really, really shines here. One last thing as well, you're going to end up with a, whatever construction ship Sentinel. comes along. Uh, what you want to do is see how many drones it's got on board. The maximum build speed is determined by how many drones a builder has, and builders can carry a maximum of 30 useful ones. They can carry more than 30, but if they have less than 30, uh, they're actually going to be kind of useless. Now, as you can see here, we can't actually see its loadout, so what we want to do is go to scan mode, and uh, then we want to right-click the ship and go scan, and then keep our crosshairs right over the middle. You need to be really close to do that. We have a police license, which allows us to do that with, it, with impunity. I wouldn't do that too much if you don't have a police license. The odd scan you'll get away with, it. if you keep doing it, it seems to drive down your relationships, or people don't like it because you're not the police. Anyway, then we can go in here and we can check the loadout on this thing. It has 50 construction drones, or 59, so that means it's going to produce at max speed. You can see there's actually 30 active ones. So long as a construction ship has 30 active tr drones, that means it's building at the maximum speed it possibly can. If it has less, or it's only got 5 or 6 drones, then you're going to have a much slower build speed. That can catch you out, though it is Factory. unlikely. We can see the construction going on over there, and we can also go into Configure Station, 
And we can see that it will take 3 minutes and 30 seconds for the basic dock to be finished, and then it's going to start on the first defense disc platform. Uh, the reason it's designed this way is so that all the firepower faces forward, but it should be able to shoot sideways as well on both sides, and there's not really too many discs either way. Oh, or too many discs that can't fire on a particular direction. As well as that, you can place another disc up here to make this five, or to make this uh, six modules. You can't quite put fun on the bottom, though. And you can sometimes place extras on the side and stuff like that, but it gets all sorts of complicated. I find that this just works the best in terms of fields of fire available, while also allowing you to stick on an administrative center when the time comes. The docking bay is complete. It is now starting on the first defense platform. Once you've got the actual basics up and running, or the, the actual docking bay up and running, you can then assign out a manager to the location. Until the first docking bay goes down, you can't. When it comes to assigning out people, you just want to go into your player character, then you want to go into personnel, otherwise you can hire them directly off a station. Uh, now, honestly, it doesn't really matter how much you... Like, the management on these doesn't really matter, but a little bit of management skill would not go astray. It's just going to determine how far away they can hire from. Uh, normally, I like to hire off my builder. My builder has a large crew, so the loss of one or two people here doesn't matter. Uh, work somewhere else for me. And then we want to go to our location. And then we want to select the Holy Vision Factory. And we'll assign them as a manager and assign. Now, the reason you do want a manager on here is you can actually make a few changes or you can add some things to the station that makes it even more deadly and useful. Now, if you go under Station Overview instead of Configure Station, Station Overview, we can go in here and we can create drones. So you can create cargo drones, defense drones, and repair drones. I would like about 10 repair drones just to make sure this... Uh, station stays well repaired. Defense drones, uh, give us say about 20 for now, we'll probably go up as far as 30. Uh, station account, we're going to accept whatever estimate they give us just to build all of these things. Now station drones are basically like small fighters that will go around and defend. They're nice when stuff ends up just outside of the 10 kilometer range of the plasma. You can actually send out some ships to chase things down or it will automatically send them out to chase them down. Just some things will hang around just outside of range and it can get annoying. So this works really well. They will have to buy the drone components, the energy cells, and the smart chips, and if you don't have a manager, they can't buy them. And the range they can buy them from is determined by the management skill on your manager. Oh, would you look at that! Xenon has arrived, and our defense platform, which has just been built, is more than happy to blast into oblivion. Okay, then. That was, um, quick. Sorry, I had that on high speed. Yeah, the moment these things get built, the weapons start going down. Namely because they're made out of such basic parts that... Yep, they're instantly almost created. This thing is now pretty much set to defend itself and we can leave. Two modules here should be able to take on just about anything. Uh, let's have a quick grander here. With two modules complete, we can see we have 20 of 30 operational plasma turrets, 16 of 24 operational flak turrets, and about 16 shield generators up and running out of a potential 24. This thing's pretty much sorted. However, I would usually hang around until at least the third module is complete unless I had a pressing quest that needed taken care of. One great thing about these defend platforms, they make things very shiny. Well, next collecting of all of the trash that gets dropped. As you'll notice, there's loads container. of stuff getting left around, container. and that is container. a lot of money that we can be harvesting automatically if we want. First up, we want a ship to do the collection for us. I find the most cost-efficient one is to use a medium ship. You can use fighters, but fighters have a tendency to get blapped every so often. Medium ships just tend to last longer, and we can buy a ship, ship for relatively cheap. Uh, if we go in here, we can buy ourselves a Nemesis Vanguard. Now, these are pretty solid ships. They're mid-range ones, but they're also pretty cheap so long as you spec them just right. Combat Drives Mark II, Thrusters Mark II, Shield Generators Mark II. Get two of them. No weapons. Don't bother putting any weapons on there at all. Uh, flight Assist, Short Range Scanner, done, done, and done. We don't want anything else bar a Captain. That's it. It's going to come in a little bit less than a million. Well, it depends what your rating is with the faction. But about a million and change will buy you one of these. Here is one we made earlier. Now, first thing we want to do is go grab their behavior. We want to get rid of fly and wait. Uh, then what we want to do is actually delete all of that. Hold position. Instead, we want repeat orders. Now, you notice repeat orders is grayed out. That's because the captain is a moron. So first thing you want to do is either right click the ship or right click in here under the pilot's name and we want to calm them. Then what we want to do is give them a seminar. Yeah, we want to give them a basic seminar in piloting. You can buy basic seminars in piloting from pretty much any trader. All the trading, all the trade locations stock them. You just have to go into one of the shops inside. And done. Basic seminar for piloting by six. You're, yeah, well, one will be fine. Then we can go back out. 
Then we go right back in under behavior, and now we can available to repeat orders. Exit. Once repeat orders has been completed, we grab them and we go over to the defense platform there and click behind it. You don't want to click in front of it. You want to make sure that their default location that they go and wait at is right here. And we want to click them to collect drops. Now you can move it around a bit, but I like to keep it just behind the defense platform. They are now going to run around this location, grabbing every single drop that happens. There is more than a few of these that are around the place. I have a, I, I used Paragons originally, but I found that the Nemesis is just, well, I put guns on these things first. I tried doing all sorts of things to keep them alive. Best thing, get them to run away. Don't have them fight, have them run. If you look under individual responses, the default one is escape. If they get attacked, they're not going to try and fight back. They don't even have any guns. They're just going to immediately try and run away and get away from the people trying to kill them. It's just faster that way and keeps them alive for longer. Now, you will have to manually go around to these initially, but once you get up to the later levels of tech, you can teleport. Entering. Can I help? Talk to the pilot on board of the ship. You'll notice, actually, there's the defense platform off in the distance. Go to more and get them to hand you their inventory. Let's Man. have a quick see what our inventory looks like right now. Right now, our inventory is 1,061,940,000. Okay, that's way too high, but let's just see roughly how much this one has been holding on to us. Can I holding help? on for us. Uh, you, give us your inventory. And then we can go right back under player details. Check inventory, and we gained about 20 million or so. This has paid basically for the ship and the defense platforms and all itself several times over. And this is the power of defense platforms. Once you put them up... You can see that our ships are just going to go around harvesting all of the junk that drops. Uh, how are you currently doing? You are currently going back. It seems to default back to this, and then it should start grabbing the pieces. Go on, go on, and slurps it up. This is a great way to get your hands on lots of these components and generate cash. It's not the fastest generation of cash, and it's a little bit inconsistent. It really depends on how often you've got enemies coming through the gates. So Hatikva's Choice would be your primary example of a high traffic gate that generates a lot of money. As a quick example of just how destructive a small platform like this is, we have three discs mostly completed. We're just going to set this Paranid Odysseus Destroyer to hostile. Uh, this should not take long. And that causes all of the plasma cannons to open fire. Yeah, their accuracy is not perfect, but I'm sure they'll get a bead on them quite shortly. And that's sort of the problem for any ships trying to attack any of these. The sheer weight of firepower is far superior to anything any other destroyer can bring to bear. And their range is pretty much as long as every other weapon as well. Meaning everyone's got to get in range and then they quickly get destroyed. Do try and avoid staying in system when these things are firing though. The splash damage does have a tendency to make you the odd enemy now and then. In short, use all Argon tech. Argon plasma, large plasma cannons, medium flak cannons, position them at choke points that faces off against your enemies, or you can forward place them against people you're planning on going to war with. <coughs> Defense platforms are incredibly useful. Setting them up before you leave your game running in SATA overnight will allow you to come back in the morning and still find the galaxy mostly how you left it. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.